made it to the city of Pilsen and today we're going to be checking out this city. We just had a wonderful stay here at the Courtyard by Marriott and next we're going to start our day and go check out the main square. So we made it to the main square and here in the center of the square is the Cathedral of St. Bartholomew and it has the tallest spire, uh, church spire here in the Czech Republic. So usually you can go up to this spire, uh, there's like a little outlook and we're going to try to go up there today. It is Sunday so we'll see if they are open. Where are you going Griff? What is it? there. Yeah. It's a tower. The tower is 102 meters tall and 299 steps to the top. So now we're heading up to the church spire and there is a nice lookout view up there. And it's open every day from 10 to 6. So we made it to the top and we got here right at noon so we got to hear the church bells go off which we got to see them in, in action ringing, mm -hmm. and it was very loud. So yeah. if you're not a fan of loud noises, mm, don't come at the hour. Try to not time it where you're inside during the top of the hour. But we made it to the top, and there is some good views of the city. And here is the great synagogue, and I think we may check that out next. So the tower was worthwhile and it was 110 corona for an adult and 60 for a child age 6 to 15. If you are not steady on your feet, there are some very narrow steps, so you may want to uh, opt out and not do this. But now we're going to go inside and check out the inside of the cathedral. So the cathedral, like most cathedrals here in Europe, is very beautiful on the inside. Unfortunately, you can't go all the way into the uh, cathedral, uh, just into the entrance where you can see the whole sanctuary area and all the stained glass and artwork. Um, but it is really pretty inside, so I would recommend just stepping inside and taking a look at that. So one thing nice about this square is that the architecture here is so beautiful and there's lots of cafes where you can just sit outside and just enjoy uh, the nice architecture, the buildings, and especially on a beautiful day like today. So next we've made it to the Great Synagogue, which is the second largest here in Europe. And one fun fact is up here they have the Ten Commandments posted. And from the liberation of Pilsen, there was actually a bullet that is stuck in the Ten Commandments right next to the commandment that says, Thou shall not kill. And so whenever they were, they were restoring the synagogue, they decided to leave that bullet there in the Ten Commandments. So we just checked out the inside of the Great Synagogue and uh, you do have to pay admission to go inside and most of the exhibits are only in Czech and not in English but they do have a nice guidebook that you can read while you go in and for males they do provide you with a, a kippah which is you know customary to wear that for males inside of this synagogue. So about the history of this place is before World War II there was about 2,600 uh, Jewish people that would attend um, this synagogue for services but then during World War II those people were um, sent to a concentration camp and then after the war only 200 of those people survived. Most of the Jewish people in this community then either Im immigrated to Israel or to the U.S. During the war, the synagogue was used as a factory to make 
uniforms for the German soldiers and the towers were used uh, to spot enemy planes. So now we are at the Thank You America Monument, which is to honor the U.S. forces that liberated Pilsen on May 6, 1945. And so behind me, this street they've named the America Street. And every year on May 6, here in Pilsen, they celebrate the liberation of the city. And they have a big festival where people dress up in the uniforms from World War II and they drive the military vehicles in a parade through the city. And it is supposedly a really big ordeal. So maybe we can check that out some other time. So next we stopped and got some ice cream. There's a really good ice cream shop here called Colombina. And so I got the banana chocolate. And Maria got... It's called biscuit? Biscuit. I don't know. Like a cookie, I guess. What do you think, Truett? Is it good? <laughs> So the ice cream was great and it was only 35 corona per scoop. So as you're walking around the city, you may see um, some metal plaques on the ground that have people's names on it. And so uh, we saw two outside of this ice cream shop we just stopped at. And so it tells of uh, uh, people that were deported from their homes during World War II and, um, where they, and it shows where, where they lived and their date of birth and things like that and where they were deported to. Right down the road from the Great Synagogue is the General Patton uh, Museum. And so I think we may try to check this out if we have enough time. We made it to the Pilsner Urkel Brewery and today we have a tour so we're going to tour the brewery and one thing about the tour is that we get to try the unfiltered unpasteurized beer and supposedly that's the only place you can try it. Tickets were about 16 euro per person and Griffin uh, for his ticket was only 2 euros. So we booked tickets ahead of time. They do tours throughout the day in English, Czech and German and so we're going to do English tour. The Czech Republic has the highest per capita beer consumption in the world. The tour started at the visitor center and after there we got on a bus and went to the bottling plant. During the tour we got to go to the bottling plant and some of the facts that they told us were that the bottles are reused on an average of 22 times and they process 60,000 bottles an hour, 24 hours a day. Here on the tour, you can try the barley, and you can try the malt after it's done. Let's give it a try. Very chewy, not gonna eat that second piece. <laughs> yeah, very weedy. Kinda like, kinda like granola. Granola? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Pilsen didn't always have good beer. In fact, in the early 1800s, most of the beer in Pilsen was top fermented, and there were hundreds of barrels of beer in the city square that no one would drink because it was so bad. The brewers of Pilsen hired Joseph Grohl, a Bavarian brewer, to help them brew a bottom fermented beer. The first batch was first served on November the 11th in 1842, and the people liked it so much that the demand grew increasingly. 70% of beers are pale lagers based on the Pilsner Urkel. Urkel means a spring of a river, so Pilsner Urkel symbolizes that it is the beginning of Pilsner beer. 
we headed to the cellars for the final part of the tour. So now we just got our beer glasses and we're going to try the unfiltered, unpasteurized beer, which you can only try here on the tour. They don't sell this, so that's, that's unique. We'll try that for the first time. <laughs> okay, the best part of the tour is finally getting to try the beer. I've already tried mine. I couldn't wait, and it is really good. I'm not a big beer drinker, but this is delicious. So we just got to try the unfiltered beer, and I do think that it tastes better than what I've tried before, you know, at like a restaurant, when I've tried the same beer before, I think it tastes better here. And so we've noticed that before whenever we've gone to another brewery and it tastes better straight from the barrel. So, so far this has been a really good brewery tour and this is the last stop. So now we're gonna go back outside and walk around. So we just finished the brewery tour and we're wrapping up our time here in Pilsen. So thanks for following along with us today as we showed you some of the things to do here in this city. We've had a really good time here in Pilsen, and I think it's definitely worth you know a day or a weekend mm -hmm. trip. A lot yeah. of people, whenever they think of the Czech Republic, they just go to Prague and that's it. Mm -hmm. But I think Pilsen is definitely worth a stop since uh, there's a lot of good stuff to see here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.